Take a look at these two scales. What do you notice about them? Are they similar in any way? If you look closely, you can see that they have the exact same notes inside of them and in the exact same order, but they're starting on a different place. You see this scale starts on A, and this scale starts on F sharp. And since they start in different places, that technically makes them different scales. You see, where you start a scale is really important. Two scales might have the same notes inside of them, but depending on where you start the scale, it changes the name of the scale. The scale on top is an A major scale, and the scale on bottom is an F sharp minor scale. But these two scales have a very special relationship with each other since they share the same notes inside of them. They are called relative keys. We say that F sharp minor is the relative minor of A major, and A major is the relative major of F sharp minor. The reason why it's useful to know the relative key is because the two keys are very closely related. And when we play music, we can shift between these two keys very easily since they share so many of the same notes. A lot of the notes and chords you play in A major also work in F sharp minor, and vice versa. However, the point of gravity shifts depending on which key you're in because the root has changed. Here's an A major scale. And here's an F sharp minor scale. Side note for those of you who don't know, the root of A major is A, and the root of F sharp minor is F sharp. The root is the center of gravity of a key. It's the home base. It's also called the tonic. Now let's say you're playing in a major key and you want to figure out what the relative minor key is. There are a few ways you can do that, and I'm gonna show you how. The first way is we can move the root down three half steps, also known as semitones. For example, if we were playing in the key of C major and we wanted to find the relative minor key, we would just move three half steps down the chromatic scale from the note C. Side note, what is the chromatic scale? The chromatic scale is just a scale that plays all 12 pitches, so every single note. So if you played every note on the piano, white and black keys moving up, this is the chromatic scale. I'm not skipping a single note. Um, if you were playing it on a guitar or a ukulele, you would just take your finger and move it up one fret all the way up the neck, and that would be your chromatic scale. Okay, so I said we want to find the relative minor of the key of C, and I'm going to move down three half steps, right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I get to the note A. That means that A minor is the relative minor of C major. And if I wanted to write out these two scales, let's first write out our C major scale. And so, remember, we go in down three half steps, one, two, three, we got to A. So I'm going to start with an A, right, because it's A minor. And I'm just going to use the same notes in the C major scale, but just starting on A. So A, and then B, then C, then D, then E, then F, and then G. So exact same notes, just different order. C major, A minor. So here's our C major scale. And here's an A minor scale. Okay, so let's do another one. What is the relative minor of E flat major? So first let's write out our E flat major scale. One quick side note, if you don't know how to figure out the notes in your major scale, I have a video on the circle of fifths, and it shows you how to create the circle of fifths, and then it also shows you how you can figure out what all your major scales are from the circle of fifths. So I'm gonna put a link to that video down below, and so it's a great way to be able to figure out the notes in your major scale, so you don't have to keep Googling them to remember what it is. You can just stop and figure it out yourself, because the more you figure it out yourself, the more you'll actually begin to memorize it. So now to find the relative minor key of E flat, we're going to count down three half steps in the chromatic scale. So we're gonna find E flat on our keyboard and we're gonna go down three half steps. So one, two, three, I get to C. That means that C minor is our relative key. So now let's write out our C minor scale. So what's the first note going to be in our C minor scale? Well, it's always in the name of the scale. It's gonna be a C. So C is the first note, and then remember I said it has the exact same notes as E flat, but we're gonna just start on C. So C and then D, then what comes next? E flat, right? Then F, G, A flat, 
and B flat. So B flat major scale, C minor scale, exact same notes, just starting on different places. Here's an E flat major scale. And now a C minor scale. Okay, let's do one more. So what is the relative minor of D flat major? So just for reference, let's write out our D flat major scale. So. Okay, so I'm gonna find D flat, and I'm gonna move down three half steps in the chromatic scale. So one, two, three, and I get to B flat. So B flat is going to be the relative minor of D flat major. So let's write out our B flat minor scale. We're gonna start with A, you guessed it, B flat. Then what comes next? C, right? Then D flat, E flat, F, G flat, and A flat. So there you have it, D flat major and B flat minor are relative keys. They have the exact same notes, they're just starting on different places. Here's a D flat major scale. Now a B flat minor scale. Okay, let's look at another way to figure out the relative minor key. Okay, so the second way is to look at the sixth degree of the major scale. What does that mean exactly? Let's go back to our friend C major and write out a C major scale. Now let's number the scale. I said you need to look at the sixth degree of the major scale, right? So which note is the sixth degree? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's A. So that means A minor is our relative key. Let's look at another one. So what is the relative minor of E major? First, let's write out our E major scale. Now let's number the scale. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is the sixth degree of the scale? It's C sharp. Therefore, C sharp minor is the relative minor of E major. So let's write out a C sharp minor scale just for fun. See if you can figure it out yourself. What's the starting note? C sharp, right? And then, as I said, it has the exact same notes as E major. We're just starting on the C sharp now. So C sharp, then D sharp, then E, then F sharp, then G sharp, then A, and then B. Let's listen to an E major scale. Now let's listen to a C-sharp minor scale. Okay, let's do one more. So what is the relative minor of B-flat major? So first let's write out our B-flat major scale. Now let's number the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Which is the sixth degree of the scale? It's G. So therefore, G minor is going to be our relative minor key. So let's write out our G minor scale. So where do we start? On G. And again, it has the exact same notes as B flat major, just starting on the G. So G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat and F. Let's listen to a B flat major scale. Now let's listen to a G minor scale. Now I'm going to show you one other way to figure out your relative minor key using the circle of fifths.
So oftentimes you're going to see the circle of fifths with the relative minor keys written on the inside of the circle. Right now we have just the major keys written on the outside, but we're going to fill in the minor keys on the inside. So the way we can figure out the minor key, just looking at the circle and not really knowing anything else, is we can move like basically a, it's a quarter of the circle over to get to our relative minor key. I, I like to think of it as three spaces, a one, two, three. So what I mean by that is the relative minor key of C major is going to be one, two, three, A minor. So we can write A minor on the inside right there next underneath C, okay? So now let's figure out the relative minor of G. So we're gonna move over three spaces, right? One, two, three, it's E. So we have E minor is the relative minor key of G major. Now let's do it for D. One, two, three, we have a B. So we have B minor. Cool, let's keep going. For A, we have one, two, three. So we could either write F sharp or G flat, but since A is a sharp key, meaning it has sharps in it, it does not have flats in it, we're going to put F sharp minor instead of G flat minor. So F sharp minor. For those of you who don't know, G flat and F sharp are what we call inharmonic equivalents, meaning it's the same pitch, the same note, it just has two different names. So we could call this note either G flat or F sharp. We could call this note either B or C flat. We could call this note either D flat or C sharp. Same note, just two different names. Okay, now let's figure, find it for E major. So we're gonna move over three spaces, one, two, three. We get to this D flat or C sharp. Since the key of E major has sharps in it, we're gonna go with the sharp one. So we're gonna do C sharp minor. Okay, now let's find it for the key of B. So we're gonna move over three spaces, one, two, three, and we get to A flat. Now B is a key that has sharps in it, so I wanna give this a sharp name. So the inharmonic equivalent for A flat is G sharp. So what does that mean? G sharp and A flat are the exact same notes. It's just two different names. So I'm gonna write G sharp minor here, just cause I wanna keep sharps with sharp keys and flats with flat keys. Okay, now let's find it for G flat. So we go one, two, three, and we get to E flat. So E flat minor is going to be the relative minor of G flat, so E flat minor. Now what if I wanted to find the relative minor of F sharp? So I'm just gonna write down what the inharmonic equivalent of E flat is, which is D sharp, so E flat and D sharp are the same note, so I could, so that the relative minor of G flat is E flat minor, the relative minor of F sharp is D sharp minor. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. Basically I'm just keeping sharps with sharps and flats with flats. Look, if you are new to music theory and you're still trying to soak this all in and you're suddenly feeling yourself being really overwhelmed by all these notes and these inharmonic equivalents and blah, don't worry too much about it, to be honest, you're not gonna be playing in the keys of G flat or C sharp very often. And um, don't get bogged down about it or don't just give up right now and say, I'm not gonna keep going. It's gonna get easier as we get to this side of the circle. So this is the most confusing and dense, densest part of the circle. So just keep, keep trucking on even if you don't understand 100% of everything because eventually it will start to click. Now let's find the relative minor of D flat. So we're gonna move over three spaces, one, two, three. B flat, so the relative flat minor. Okay, what's the relative minor of A flat? I'm actually gonna erase these because I think they're just gonna be confusing the more stuff we have written on the circle. It's just gonna be more confusing. And I don't want you to be confused. Okay, so what's the relative minor of A flat major? So we're gonna move over one, two, three, F. So we have F minor. Okay, what about for E flat? One, two, three, we have C minor. What about for B flat? One, two, three, we have G minor. See, I told you it gets easier up on this in this area. What about for F? One, two, three, we have D, so D minor. So that's the other way we can figure out our relative minor keys is with the circle of fifths, just moving over three spaces in the circle. Again, I'm going to put a link to my circle of fifths video in the description of this video that you can check out. Now, eventually, I'm going to make a video that continues on with this relative keys, um, maybe show you some exercises that you can do that you can really put it into your work. But this is a good place to start, just figuring out how to be able to find your relative minor key. Um, 
and knowing that the notes are the same within the two of them. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I plan on making more music theory videos, so if you have any specific topics you'd like me to make a video about, let me know in the comments. Or if you just want to say hey, say hey. Um, give this video a thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, you can press the alert button, the bell, so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. Um, so that's it. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks so much for watching.